good morning students so today we begin with the next part of the work of the river that is denudation so in the previous class we have learnt how the river does the work of transportation deposition and erosion today we will further learn about the river and learn how the river has got different stages and what are the effects of these stages what are the different sculptures which the river makes on the earth in these different stages so most of the rivers originate in the hills and in the high mountains we can see over here how the river originates in the hill or a high mountain and starts its journey from the steep slopy mountain and ends its journey near the ocean now the river's journey is on the basis of the slope it can be classified into upper course middle course and lower course the upper course is a very youthful stage where the river is coming down the mountain running hopping and jumping as its youthful stage it flows very swiftly with a very high velocity numerous streams joins it and increases the volume of the water now when the river is flowing in the youthful stage we can see what kind of a valley it makes steep slope about which we are going to study in detail now the volume of water is not much due to the steep slope when the river is coming down so it swiftly does the work of erosion down cutting action or the vertical action is very prominent in the upper course and it carves out beautiful well sculptured valleys swift currents can transport large rocks boulders which get smaller and smoother and they also get rounded as they flow along with the flow of the water and they get smaller as they flow with the water now the landforms which are made in the upper course we will be learning about them v shaped valleys now this type of valleys are formed by a river in the areas of soft rock and heavy rainfall so when the river is coming down the mountain these type of valleys are formed especially in areas where the mountainous region is having a very heavy rainfall this is the diagram which shows the v shaped valley and here you can see real picture of a v shaped valley the sides of the river can easily get eroded that widens the valley at the top the cross section of such a valley resembles an english letter v you can see over here that this kind of a narrow flow steep sides get formed when the river is in its youthful stage apart from the v shaped valley another very important 
landform which gets formed in the upper course of the river is a waterfall. Now, when a river tumbles down almost vertically from a considerable height, you can see over here the river is tumbling down, it is falling down from a considerable height, from a pretty great height, it forms a waterfall. Waterfalls develop due to the irregularities of the slope in the river course. When there is an arrangement of hard and soft rock, the overlying hard rock protects the softer rock. Now, when the river cuts down its bed to reach the hard rock, the river water jumps from the resistant rock bed to the lower part where the softer rocks get easily eroded. So you can see over here how this part of the softer rock is getting easily eroded. Water falling on the soft rocks form from a greater height makes a large hollow. This part becomes a hollow like structure which is known as a plunge pool. Because this part which is made up of soft rock gets eroded very quickly. So a plunge pool like structure gets formed. So you can see how the river is falling as a waterfall here and with time. This hard rock will break and the waterfall will recede. In a glaciated region where hanging valleys are formed, you can see over here hanging valley. This also result in the formation of a waterfall when the water melts. Here you can see in a glaciated region a waterfall has got formed and this is an area where the formation of waterfall has occurred because of the melting of the snow. Elsewhere we find that when the river plunges down a plateau from the edge of a plateau or a tableland, this also results in the formation of a waterfall. This is a, the Chota Nagpur Plateau and one of the most beautiful waterfall is falling from here is beautiful sight of how the river is making a forming a waterfall. This beautiful waterfall is also very famously known as the waterfall in Chitrakoot. This area is actually in Chitrakoot. Now a series of waterfall, we find there is a series of waterfall we call it a cascade. See over here that there are series of waterfalls. They are together, they are known as a cascade. The Jog Falls or the Gersoppa waterfall, which is formed by the river Sharavati in Karnataka, is the highest waterfall in India. So these are the landforms which are made by the river in its higher course. Now let us move to the middle course or the matured course of the river. Now this is a mature stage because now the river has 
come down from the mountain and it is flowing on the plains. It has descended from the mountains and has entered the plains. Now the abrupt change in the slope of the river bed from a steep to a gentle suddenly decreases the speed of the river. A number of additional tributaries begin to join the main river, increasing the volume of the water of the river. As the river enters the middle course, the velocity and load carrying power of the river decreases. And there is more of lateral erosion rather than vertical erosion as it used to happen in the youthful stage. You can see the difference? Here the valleys are pretty V-shaped. Here you can see that the valley floor has become slightly wider. So the river has now entered the middle course and it begins to meander. See how it is meandering. In the plain course of the river, due to the lack of slope or gradient, the lateral or sideways erosion becomes very prominent. The river now flows sluggishly, often changing its course from one side to the other. The river forms loops or curves which are known as meanders. The word meander comes from the river meander which flows in Turkey, which is well known for its serpentine-like course. See over here, the river is moving just like a serpent. So that is why it is known as a serpentine course, making very sharp loops. In reality, the river moves like this. You can see over here how the river is moving like a serpent. And its movement is known as a serpentine movement or meander. While making the big loops, the river water has different speed in outer and inner curves. Water moves faster in the outer curve. So this is the outer curve of the meander. And it erodes the banks. This is the outer curve. The river is coming this way. And it is eroding this bank. So here the speed of the river is pretty high. Now it erodes the outer bank and deposits the eroded material along the inner bank. This is the inner bank. Here also you can see how the outer bank is being eroded and the inner bank is being deposited. So the erosional and depositional activities go on simultaneously. Many of the northern rivers in India like the river Ganga, Indus make meanders in their middle course. A very important formation in the middle course is that of an oxbow lake. So this is how an oxbow lake is formed. The erosion in the outer curve and deposition in the inner curve results in the formation of big loop-like structure. This is how the river is moving and due to excessive 
erosion in the outer curve and deposition in the inner curve leads to the totally cut off of a narrow neck of the loop of the main river channel. You can see over here how this area is getting eroded and there is a lot of deposition occurring over here. With time, this entire area will get deposited with materials that is eroded from the outer banks and a lake, a horseshoe type of lake or we call it an oxbow lake will be cut off from the main river and the river will take a totally different course leaving behind this oxbow lake. You can see over here how due to the meandering of the river an oxbow lake has been formed. This picture Later on, this area will also form an oxbow lake and the river will take another different course. Now let us come to the lower course or the old stage. Now the slope of the gradient is the least over here. Why? Because now the river is very close to the sea. The river becomes very very sluggish and due to very low velocity the river is not able to transport the load and begins to deposit the sediments on the valley floor. The river valley becomes very wide and it is known as the old stage. Here we can see that the, in the old stage the valley has become very wide, flat and the floor has become flat and the sides have become very gentle. This is the old stage. And in the old stage, the most important landform gets formed is that of a delta. The word delta is derived from a Greek letter. For, and it is triangular in shape. And this triangular depositional feature is formed by the Nile in the downstream, here you can see the triangular shaped lower course of the river Nile. This is a real picture, satellite image and this is the diagram. Now the heaviest deposition occurs in a delta. It is formed due to constant heavy deposition of solid material or silt by a river which begins to choke the river channel itself. The deposits obstruct the free flow of the main river. You can see over here, free flow of the main river is being obstructed. And so, the river begins to split into several distributaries. See all the distributaries? To make the water flow uninterrupted to the sea. This process goes on and results in the formation of a triangular depositional feature with a network of crisscross several 
with several distributaries. Here we find Great Bengal Delta or the Sundarban Plains is where exactly it is and all the details are being shown in this diagram. As far as the ideal conditions of a delta formation is concerned, the river should originate from a mountain and it should be having a well developed upper course so that it can carry a large amount of sediments with it. The river should have a well developed tributary system which can contribute in adding more and more sediments into the main river. The river should have a long lower course to make the river flow very sluggishly and ultimately deposit the sediments near the ocean. The area where the river meets the sea should be free from any kinds of tides. That is the mouth of the river should be free from any tides. The adjoining sea should be shallow. There should not be many ponds or lakes in the course of the river. Otherwise, large quantities of sediments will get deposited on the way itself and not much will reach the delta, which will lead to the formation of delta. There are several types of delta which are formed by different rivers. Now here you can see the bird foot digitate delta. Now it is mainly composed of fine sediments like silt. Very few distributaries having clearly defined channels across the delta are found. Such kind of a delta is formed by the river Mississippi. The Arquait Delta. It is composed of coarse sediments such as gravel and sand. It is triangular in shape. And this kind of a delta is mainly formed by rivers like Nile, Ganges and the river Indus. Estuarine Delta This is formed in the mouth of a submerged river. It takes a shape of an estuary and this kind of a delta is normally formed by Elbe, Orb, Vistula and the Amazon. Cuspet Delta Now this kind of a delta is vaguely shaped like a V or just like a tooth with curved sides. Cuspid deltas are formed when a river flows into the sea with waves that hit it head on, spreading the deposited sediments out, outwards. You can see over here. Now, as far as the importance of deltas are concerned, the deltas of river Nile and Indus have cradled early civilizations based on agriculture. Alluvial deposits replenish by rivers make the delta very fertile for growing crops. The distributaries provide a network of routes for transportation. Dense forests provide ideal conditions for bird sanctuary and wildlife. So we have learned today how important the river is as is it passes through the three different stages.
and in each of these stages the river is sculpturing different types of landform which is very different from every other stage so each stage has got landforms which are very different from one and the other now this is how the river passes from a youthful stage to a maturity stage and later on to the old stage before it submerges itself into the sea so that is what we have enough time for today thank you